Hello internet, welcome to episode 71 of the Deep Fried Neurons podcast. The summer is brutal and the recording these episodes has gotten harder and harder because of the weather. And uh, I hope you enjoy this one. I spent a lot of time in this and to be honest, this is one of the most fun episodes to research for me. So, yeah, cue the fucking So this entire episode started when Nicolas Cage showed up in my dreams in a rainbow filter dressed half as a banana and he was going on and on about one of his films that I watched and I woke up and I was wondering about it for about half a day and then I ended up um, you know googling this movie that uh, that I remember watching of him that must have been stored in the back of my mind it was called knowing and it start I mean if you don't want the spoilers you should skip a little ahead like I'm going to ruin this movie for you but i must warn you you're not missing a, missing up on anything it is a really bad movie and you will be doing nothing but wasting your time if you listen to this so basically nicolas cage is the father of a girl who get father of a boy who gets a, a time capsule letter in the year 2050 after what 50 years or 100 years from 1950 or 2000 i can't really remember and she's listed every catastrophe that will ever happen in dates uh on a number like as fast as she can and uh, well eventually she's written the end of the world which nobody believes but nicolas cage and one other woman and things like that that threw me down the rabbit hole as to whether time capsule is an actual practice people do i i knew that we have done them before but like i knew about the big ones which we we will talk about eventually anyway but uh It turns out it's a very common practice in America. I mean, in India I don't remember as a child having a time capsule at all. Uh there might be companies who are doing it now because it's quite peppy. Like we'll talk about the trends that it has set and also like as a marketing trend it's not as attractive because it's going to pay off like what a 100 or 5000 years later. I understand why not a lot of people do it especially in places with like very short attention spans and India is just uh finishing up dealing with their own history like i don't think we have the time to leave a signature of the present intentionally like curated may not to mention it will be vastly debated what to leave back so i saw in america there's a lot of lot of these especially the youtubers that i saw at least were all extremely american uh and i came across one made by a youtube content creator or youtube channel holder by the name Death Hag uh, who buried some items in 1976 which mostly contain newspapers uh, Richie Rich comic books and candies and a bunch of flight uh, brochures and tickets to Jamaica along with postcards from 1976 along with his favorite candies and what not and well bill for uh, hardware and things like that so that we know what things were like back then uh, and he opened it himself which is it was quite interesting to watch that people follow their no- nostalgia all by themselves like across 37 years also i was wondering what would it be like if somebody else found it in a completely different time scale but well i mean not necessarily something that took up my curiosity all that much it just intrigued me into this idea of a ti- time capsule and this video had me thinking that how many other time capsules are there it turns out it is a thing that people have been doing for a while for example paul revere and samuel adams left a time capsule in a, in the year 1795 where they left a coin or a shilling from the year 1652 which was made in the defiance of the british law at the time and this one the time capsule was first packed after 20 years of independence with newspapers from the time and other coins along with uh, medallions from george washington and what not So it was interesting to see how history could be revisited and the messages could be seen from the people themselves there's something intimate about a message left by somebody for you and i also understood that a lot of time capsule making is curation people want certain things to be remembered from a certain time as a statement of their time for the future to know which is something that they intend to do anyway and i saw that 
that usually goes horribly wrong in some cases. Now, this is not the most horrible thing that we will come across today, but it is a start. It is a mildly annoying one, if you will. Uh, let's talk about the one that 9gag left. In 2017, 9gag turned 9. And because uh, 9 and 9, haha, do you see? Do you see what they did? Um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, for their ninth birthday, they wanted to do something really special. So, they carved out a 4.5 meter long limestone with all kinds of memes on it like not good memes all of them dead memes on uh, this limestone and it will be buried somewhere discreet for future generations to find 4chan which was who was very annoyed by what was on the plaque and how the future generations will remember us has found out that it's located somewhere in southern spain if i'm not wrong i'm not sure but internet historian has done a complete video on it you should check that out so there's that which annoys and doesn't curate an entire world of things um, correctly for everyone, which is fine, I guess. I mean, I'm not as annoyed. Like, if people check that out, it might, they might come across it as, a, you know, something a cringy marketing stunt, hopefully, not as a statement of our time as to what we laughed at. Not to mention those memes aren't bad. They're still good the only problem is that it says lol and has a smiley face on it which cringes the shit out of me <sighs> anyway i wouldn't complain about that all all that much but then it gets darker like for example some out of context potentially criminal left time capsules while clearing up an old hospital in london they found a bag which was very intentionally left there by by the initials jm harry and turns out it belonged to a nurse and not J.M. Harry, the writer of Peter Pan. And it had two dead babies in it, along with a copy of Peter Pan and some newspapers, which was thoroughly disturbing for the finders and LA uh, police had to get involved. Turns out it was a Scottish lady who left it there. Apparently, they, they were the, her initials and it was there for 38 or 40 years in 1968. But the worst of the worst comes from this one that they found on an ex-army uh, training ground in Poland, which uh, I believe if you know about Poland and Nazi Germany in the 1940s, you have a fair idea of how horribly, uh, how, how horribly remembered that time is, especially given the Holocaust in the area. And, um, well, they found... Almost the same stuff as Americans left, as in newspapers, two copies of Mein Kampf, uh, the invitation, like very neatly packed uh, inauguration papers and records of what the soldiers were doing at the time. Nothing intimate in that box, just those things were found. Everybody knew that it was there. The concrete was marked with the, uh, with the presence of the time capsule. Uh, but the workers found it out finally when they dug through the concrete and finally got the... Uh, the time capsule out the other one which interested me which is not as disturbing because i mean this was history seen from the eyes of uh, the nazi germany not necessarily uh something that was intended to remind us how macabre our uh, history is it's just a remnant of how wrong people have been in the past of history but here is something that mildly annoys me for a reason that is very clear uh, to me and I hope that it doesn't sound insensitive when I tell you. But it also is the only exception that I found in my entire curation by well-meaning people to remind, the mor remind us of the morbidity of the human civilization and how to what extent we went. In 1970 Expo, two, ja two Japanese companies in Hiroshima made a time capsule which is to be opened 5,000 years later. Now I'll get out the jokes fast and, and strong, which means that they are going to open the time capsule, the final time, in 6970. Now understand that this time capsule was in the making in 1968 and was finished by 1969. They could have opened this in, in 6969, but they chose not to. And that is just mildly annoying because that was that could have been the nicest ni nicest thing in the world, but it's okay. We can't have all that we want. But here, the, their curation was quite 
peculiar because one of the artifacts that is contained within the time capsule which is very well preserved and very well made is um, a nail of a survivor from the Hiroshima bla- blast that happened in 1945 by the United States uh, army to end the second world war and the only remnant of the most horrible thing that humans could do to humans on a large scale which is industrial manufacturing of death and um, i found that very interesting because this was opened in 2000 and it will be opened every 100 years since and it is interesting to know that they're the only people who chose to demonstrate war and victimization of war in their time capsule for futures to remember now this is all by humans for humans this is a very anthropological method anthropological exchange so far because we're the only intelligent beings we know but you will be happy to know that we've left messages for people from outside uh, outside the earth as well or you know messages that will be around when earth won't be around one of them that is not in this category but will be for extremely future humans or anything that resembles humans on earth and understands our language and ways not necessarily language and ways but at least recognizes our existence will have legios 1 which has a, a plaque of the map of the world designed by carl sagan which is in an inner orbit which will crash eventually to the earth in a 8 million years later then there's the geostationary orbit which has echo star 16 which con- contains trevor padlin's 100 images of humanity which was launched in 2012 and and is a telecommunication satellite and of course it will be contained in a large graveyard orbit of just satellites that we've thrown out in the into space which means that it, those those will be tombs for all of the te- technology we used for the communications down here and exploration out there and when it comes to tombs those are the most reliable time capsules that we've left so far just with humans in them for resting places and um besides that of course you would know of the five probes that are interstellarly launched which are not meant for humans at all or for humans that are way far advanced than we are uh which is pioneer 1 to 10 11 and voyager 1 to along with the um, new horizons all of them happen to be interstellar crafts mostly made for exploration of the solar system and then understanding of the interstellar space so pioneer 1 and 2 contain what is called the pioneer plaque designed by carl sagan and frank drake if those na- name sounds familiar these people were also involved in the golden records committee and we will discuss that in a bit The pioneer plaque contains well an anatomy of um, male and females on it along with our solar a diagram of our solar system uh, the distance between two hydrogen atoms as a scale binary code and a complete documentation of our solar system like a big diagram of it and um hopefully they intend to communicate with that what we look like and where we are and of course remember that the male and female in this plaque are naked which means the first thing we sent into space is nude aliens asked for nudes and we gave them to them they didn't never asked for them we just sent them to them quite uninviting if you think uninvited i mean sorry english anyway the f- furthest away time capsule that we've sent is on voyager 1 which is the farthest thing we've shot into space if i'm not wrong and this is where golden records committee comes in because they chose they curated sounds images songs and greetings in greetings in 55 different languages sounds of all the animals birds and humans and of course uh, things that happen on earth 26 songs and 116 images i'll leave a link of all of them in the description about the songs there's two songs by bach there's two songs by beethoven there's two songs by uh, uh mozart and there's johnny b good by chuck berry for some reason and a rag from jat kahan ho ba- from india which was a strange curation for me i have no idea why i would have done it a little differently and 
the most interesting thing that i came across is that war poverty religion was excluded by the golden records committee to be mentioned in the record and of course there is an english message by then president of the united states jimmy carter for reasons that are completely unknown to me and those are the messages that we have left to be found i don't know 40000 billion years like 4 billion 8 billion years after we're all gone because these messages will keep traveling into space and time long after earth is gone or even you know as long as metal lasts and that's a long time in space in vacuum so that's that and the reason i brought that up is because we also in the time of quarantine of course i i had the time to think about it are living behind time capsules for example this podcast is my time capsule if internet survives like there is so much stuff that i look at 100 years from before me or 200 years from before me books films songs that act as time capsules and tell me a very peculiar perception of what history was like in the time that the that was existent behind me and that's what that's what that's where it leaves us the internet acts as an ever writing non ending list of curated or non curated behaviors and interactions and unforgivingly permanent records of what we do and where we are which means that everything you do on the internet that is traceable back to you or could be attributed to you will act as a time capsule and i think that's kind of cool and just as frightening as it, as it is liberating hope of communicate the message that i was trying to get across and uh, check out the links in description especially the links about the images and in, on the voyager and things because i thought that was very interesting uh, like share subscribe of course subscribe to me on youtube please and support me on patreon if you think the content is worth it share the content shamelessly and i'll see you next time goodbye